Anyways, one that I want to talk about. Yeah. Discord wants you to make your friends watch ads. Nice. This week, Discord will be expanding its Quest program, which I didn't even know exists, which sends notifications to some users with an offer of in-game rewards if they play certain games and stream them to their friends. These streams will have ads that live in the bottom left uh, bottom left hand corner, I guess, of the screen. These ads will be targeted based on information collected by Discord, though users can opt out both of this data collection and all notifications related to quests. Hmm. I have been wondering this whole time how streaming on Discord makes any sense for Discord at all, and this really didn't help me understand. Do tell. Are there costs? Like, is it is it direct user to user somehow? Are they? I don't think so. So it's going through Discord. <coughs> I mean, so I guess all the it... bandwidth of streams is going through Discord, and they're going to offset it with this. I mean, this is better than nothing. But I just, I just. I mean, honestly, Luke, it must be it must be going through their infra because otherwise, why would they limit right? the quality so hard? Yeah, I mean that's a good point. Like it, it could be just you know to make you pay for nitro. Or, like you can make that argument. Compatibility reasons because yeah. some people's computers won't be able to do it. But realistically, <laughs> I, I I doubt it because when when Discord was in, hey, we're just VC funded and don't need to make any money. Let's go mode. They they made everything as great as they possibly could. Like I think I I I actually. Even from a even from a user safety standpoint, I kind of feel like they would have to have it go through their infra. Yeah, because there are public servers that people stream in for sure. Yeah, yeah. And so they, like, they, and they could potentially what? be liable for what someone sent to someone else on the platform. Like they'd have to have some kind of record of that. Um, apparently, it is direct. Oh, Discord streams usually go through stun turn servers. Okay, hold on, hold on. We're getting some... No, we're getting some uh, conflicting information in the uh, float plane chat, so I'm not 100% sure. Hold on, people are saying, yeah, Google did not commit a crime. Um, just, okay. Technically, probably not. But stealing, telling you you're not... Telling someone you're not going to take their personal information and then taking it... Is that not a crime? It might not technically be a crime, but it's certainly not nice, and it should be. That's that's where I'll that's where I'll leave that. Sure. We are, if it isn't, it should be. None there. of this is legal advice. Yeah. Hey, that thing he said. Yeah. If it's peer to peer, I've never looked into this because, like, I don't care that much. It just seems a little weird to me. If it's peer to peer, I totally get it. Sounds good. Um. Yeah, routing it through their service. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, but if it's peer to peer, then sure, okay, they found a cool way to monetize it. Whatever. You don't have to do the quests. You can opt out of the data collection stuff. Seems all fine to me. Um, how it all goes live? Yeah, I don't have time to read this right now. Uh, but if if they are doing like transcoding or anything for it, it makes no sense to me at all. If it's directly peer to peer, then sure, okay, makes sense. Go live streams are transmitted to Discord's backend and then routed to viewers. This hides the IP addresses between users on the call and allows the service to control where the data is routed. For example, the service will only relay video to a participant on the call if they are watching it. The go live stream is constrained by how much data can go through the network. Because the stream needs to be watchable for every viewer, the streamer will not transmit more data than what the slowest connection can support. So that could be a major reason that they don't allow yeah, super high. Stuff. Yeah. In addition, a streamer will only transmit data if at least one viewer is watching. Estimating bandwidth is complicated. How we measure performance. So yeah, yeah, they're not transcoding. That helps a lot. No, yeah, the, no, the client transcodes. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't solve everything. Okay. But do they still, are they still absorbing the bandwidth cost? That's what I want to know. I'm not sure. Either way, Discord's model has always been kind of wild to me. You look, you look at how much Teams and Slack cost. And then you look at what Discord does, and in a huge amount of cases, 
far better than either of those platforms. And it's like, what? Maybe the real question should be, why does Teams cost that much? Well, and isn't Slack like... Uh, Did you see Teams as being decoupled from Office? Did we talk about that on Wencho already? We haven't talked about that on Wencho, but that is very interesting. Yeah, it's uh, interesting timing. Microsoft's yeah. clearly going, hmm, we push this really hard in a way that regulators are going to be probably super unimpressed by. Maybe if in good faith we decouple this now, they won't go back and look at it. Because <laughs> you know what? It's the only reason we use Teams <clears throat> was yeah. because we were effectively forced to buy it because we needed Office. I would have happily paid less and not bought teams. It is a really interesting thing because like the Taryn linked me that news article. See Linus, you can uncrime. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. Yeah, I mean I guess if in good faith you stopped being unfaithful <laughs> before she found out, that might earn you some brownie points. Oh, man. I think with most people, not enough. I mean, it's it's some. If I did that, I am still dead. Oh, I, well, yeah. I uh, won't be at work the next day. Dude. I won't be alive. I'd be alive. Yvonne's made it very clear what would happen to me. I'd be alive as long as I don't bleed out. <laughs> Understood. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. And when that woman says something, you believe her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> should be scary sometimes um what is it like okay yeah i thought i heard i can't find anything on this right now so i don't know if it's true but i thought slack was like somehow managing to be uh to be having financial issues but i'm, I'm not finding anything on that so i don't that that might have just been completely made up but anyways um it is something to now reconsider is the use of teams what AK Panda says, you cannot bleed out from such a small wound. (laughs) (sighs) Anyways. Anyway. (laughs) (laughs) We, uh... I'm no Drake. (laughs) We, we, uh, do we keep using Teams? There's so many problems with it internally. I know. And if it's being decoupled anyways. I just hate the pain of switching. Yeah. Uh, It's kind of bad, though. I know. Yeah. It's kind of usable, though. One of the frustrating things is Slack also has a ton of problems. I've said it before. I'll say it again. If Discord had an enterprise mode, I'd just put us on Discord. 100%. I'd support that. But it, it, there's just a few things. It doesn't quite... Ugh, it honestly really doesn't need much more. Which is, again, so interesting to me. Like it's Kind of infuriating. Yeah. Like, I can understand the Discord branding just not really making sense for them for a corporate product. Yeah, but they could roll the just same thing. Just clone it. Different logo, yeah. 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 Cord dis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Sid Rock. What's a Sid Rock chat? I, like I don't know. What's what's the? Uh, hmm, I don't think you want that. Hmm. I'm sure they could come up with some name. I use Discord for my company, head of IT here. That's cool. We used to use Discord for Floatplane as well. There's like some issues with it though. Yeah. Um. I don't know. It's not. I I don't think it's. I'm. You could probably get it most of the way there for what we need if you had a probably an arrangement of like different bots and things to manage different stuff. Um, but there's like, there's, there's reasons you don't actually necessarily want the window that someone looks at. This is less from it. This is more from like operations, I guess, but you don't necessarily want the window that someone needs to look at for work to also have all their personal stuff in it. And then, okay. So are you getting them to have a different work discord account you can't moderate what other things they're joining on the work discord account. Um, like removing, adding and removing someone from the server is not as clean. It's pretty easy to get off task in discord. I'll tell you that much. You can data retain in mm. Slack and in teams, which ha- has very important, um, 
benefits for companies, right? Like if you have former staff that's not with you anymore and you need to like really need to have access to those records, uh, you can really need them. Like it can be, it's not the kind of thing that I would ever be comfortable snooping on for no reason. Yeah. But if it was really needed, it could be like, oh, this changes everything kind of thing. In that defense, if you did yep. snoop on it for no reason... I don't think there's really a way to do that without majorly alerting the user. So like, yeah. which that's cool actually. Um, but yeah, if you want to like data retain direct messages that someone has from their like work discord, like, yeah, good luck. Unless you are creating the discord accounts for every one of your users, which then becomes like an onboarding nightmare and you have to track all this stuff. And it's just like, ah, I don't know, man. I, <laughs> I think it's cool that you use it. I actually liked it for a lot of when we used it for Flowplane. The reason why we st <clears throat> the reason why we stopped was uh, max maximum message length um, and code snippets and a few other things that were problematic back then. I've heard that those have gotten better and easier to deal with. I still don't think migrating back to it is fully an option because of some of the things that I just mentioned. But I honestly, I really wish that yeah, Discord would figure that out because the calls on Discord. The amount of times I've had issues with calls on Slack and Teams that I just know we wouldn't have had these issues on Discord is insane. Discord calls are solid. Yeah. I will have issues in Teams or Slack sometimes, and certain people that I know will be around on Discord. I'll jump off the Teams or Slack call and call that person on Discord just to be... Sometimes yeah. I've actually done it sometimes with just employees if I have their Discord. Um, but sometimes I'll do it to friends just to be like, hey, is my mic working and stuff? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, okay, bye. Just hang up right away. Go back to the work call to be like, okay, now I confirmed it's not... Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. 100%. Um, their, their video, their, their streaming, even just camera, great. Screen sharing, great. Never any problems there. Text chat flows really super well. Their bot support is fantastic. There's a lot of things that they have going for them that's really, really good. 